Ryan says, I've been surprised at how time consuming and detail oriented the brickwork can be. It, it really can be. And, and, you know, you'll look at mine and you'll notice that it's actually relatively sloppy. And that's, um, you know, I'm sharing the stove designs, not my, not my brick skills, but it's, um, it's partly by design because of what I just said, because I know that I'm going to be getting back in there. Now it's nice to build them as beautifully and detail oriented as you can and that's one of the joys of using the clay sand mortar is it gives you a lot of flexibility to undo things mistakes and come back and tighten them up but if you're looking for perfectly even joints and perfectly level things and perfectly spaced you know um, joints this way and no lining up joints and all of that stuff it can be very 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 detail oriented and it can be quite a brain teaser and it's really satisfying um, but it can take a lot of time. Now there's a lot of tips and tricks that I don't necessarily share because they're more bricklaying specific. But if you search bricklaying on YouTube, you can find a whole host of great videos and tips. One of my favorites is just sort of a Mason string line where they just kind of tie off string at every level. You know, they might use a, a weighted stick on each end or they might use, um, things stuck in the mortar with string wrapped around them but at any rate they'll put string line at every mortar joint so they get their mortar exactly the right elevation and exactly the right you know level um, and they will also use uh, measuring sticks um, sometimes called story sticks or there's other words for them in Mason's uh, terminology that have every elevation marked off from layer mortar gap layer mortar gap layer mortar gap and if you, you make yourself one of those sticks you can pay attention to the detail on the stick mark off all your marks and then you can hold that next to your build as you go up and you should find your elevations lining up exactly to your story stick you can use again string line uh, combined with that stick and uh, you know you can you can do really nice work if you really pay attention to detail but that's why Belgian Gulch says that's why bricklaying is a career. And that's exactly right. You know, it's a, it's an, it's a very highly skilled trade. And while it's really fun and I really enjoy doing my amateur version of it and I have no qualms with it, there is certainly an enormous difference between when I lay bricks and when a true master mason bricklayer lays bricks. And every now and then someone comes through my channel and uh, they say, well, I'm a bricklayer and this stove looks like crap, you know, and and, uh, and I agree with them. I mean, you know, they're unfortunately missing the point of what I'm trying to share. You know, people will look at my stove and they go, oh, it's a beautiful stove and the brick will come and go, no, it's not, you know, and, and I'm, it doesn't hurt my feelings because I know my brickwork isn't good and what I'm sharing is the function of it, really. Um, but yeah, you know, they should be proud of their work and, and, and hopefully, you know, it's nice to hear that you recognize how difficult it is and how difficult it is to, to do well. And so that's actually one of the biggest recommendations I make for people who are um, apprehensive about building these things and maybe they want a really nice finish. I always recommend to people who say, hey, I'm not comfortable. Do you know anyone who, in my area who does rocket stove builds? And I'll always recommend, rather than rep recommending a rocket stove builder, I'll always recommend finding a local mason. Because using my plans, the mason doesn't need the combustion knowledge. So they can build to my plans and they can do it beautifully and they can do it quickly. A good mason could throw up one of my stove bodies like this over here in, in probably the course of, you know, half a day or so. And it'd be gorgeous. Um, probably a day. But, you know, um, they could do such a better job laying the bricks and the body of the stove. There's really nothing more than just standard brickwork. So uh, that's a really good option for someone if you have a really you know, high standard and you really want perfection in your home and you don't feel like DIYing it, by all means, search a lo search local masons, find a local bricklayer. Now you'll have to twist their arm a little bit because they're going to get thrown off by the clay sand mortar. They're going to want to use setting mortars and things like that. So you'll have to stand your ground a bit. But if you can get them to work within, you know, our um, parameters, you'll get a beautiful stove. 
So Doug says, I used to be a Mason and was a little dubious about clay sand mortar, but I love it. So that's awesome, Doug. I, I just said all this right before your comment, but he says, I've been adding a lot of ash, which makes it nice and workable, just like regular mortar. And that's a great tip, Doug. You know, ash does give it a little bit of plasticity and it does make it feel like a setting mortar. So Marks asks, what proportion ash? And uh, I don't see Doug's answer there, Mark, but I will answer for you that it doesn't take much, very small amount you want to sift that ash first through a fine screen if you can to try and get out the chunks because they will hold you know they'll create issues for you in, in terms of your um, the way things settle in but really what you're trying to do is just get a little bit of ash in there to trigger the pozzolanic reaction and I'm gonna get out of my depth with the chemistry I'll say words that I don't really know what they mean um, but you know basically what you're doing is you're triggering the beginning of a reaction that has a subtle setting properties it doesn't set like lime but it does plasticize the um, mortar a little bit gives it a little bit more resiliency it does tend to set up a little here so when I say a very small amount I usually say my clay sand mortar is one part dry clay three parts dry sand and let's say not even a half a part like a quarter part just you know just a very small amount just a little supplemental ash um, and it helps a lot.